GoldenEye 007 is a classic first-person shooter released for the Nintendo 64 in 1997. And let me tell you, unwrapping that game, along with the strategy guide on Christmas 1997, made it one of the best holidays ever. It's finally available to play on modern consoles with a new release on Nintendo Switch and Xbox consoles. You can play it on the Xbox One, Xbox Series S, or X. How do these new versions stack up to the 25-year-old original? I know, the game was getting pretty old. I don't see Leonardo DiCaprio picking this one up anytime soon. But personally, I'm excited to explore how the new Xbox release compares to the cancelled 2007 Xbox Live Arcade build of GoldenEye for the Xbox 360. On Nintendo Switch, GoldenEye is only available through the $50 a year Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack subscription service. On Xbox, it's available on Game Pass, and you can also own it outright if you buy Rare Replay digitally. Just in case there's anyone out there who's new to the game, a quick recap. GoldenEye loosely follows the plot of the 1995 James Bond movie of the same name. GoldenEye was revolutionary at the time of its release, giving players a series of objectives to complete in each level of the game. We were starting to move away from the games like Doom and Quake, where the goal was just to get to the end of the level. And as you increase the difficulty of each level, the game gives you more objectives to complete. There's quite a bit of replay value in trying to finish each level over and over again on a harder difficulty. Let me start off by talking about the Switch version. The controls, to me, make this nearly unplayable on the Switch, whether it's docked or handheld. It takes a lot of getting used to, and I'm just not enjoying myself as much when I'm playing it on the Switch. The shoot button is mapped to the left trigger, aim is the right trigger, and you're still turning left and right with the left stick, which doesn't make sense on any modern controllers. None of the other options make any sense for the Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller either. The closest you can get is by going into the menu, choosing the 1.2 control option, and then swapping the left and right stick in the Switch settings menu. But I don't want to mess with that because then I have to navigate menus with the right stick. I just want the game to work. I know Nintendo is just putting in the old N64 ROM in there and calling it a day, but the controls of this game need some special care. They're doing this game a disservice by releasing it like this, and it needs to be fixed. The Xbox controls, on the other hand, are pretty good. One change I really love is that when you bring up the crosshairs to aim, the crosshair is always centered and the camera follows your aim instead like a modern game. In the original N64 and Switch versions, the crosshair moves around the screen but the camera doesn't move with it. This is an incredible change that makes the game much more playable. Moving around the crosshair in the Switch version just feels so imprecise. Given how old the game is and how early it was in the era of console first-person shooters, not everything about the game has aged well. The graphics do look pretty clean running at 720p on the Switch and up to 4K on the Xbox. They both support widescreen, as did the N64 original, which was way ahead of its time. The frame rate has been stabilized somewhat on both the Xbox and the Switch versions. The original N64 version would often dip into the 20 to 10 FPS range with a lot of action on the screen. It was kind of a mess. The Xbox version is locked to 30 FPS, which is a shame given that the cancelled GoldenEye remaster for the Xbox 360 actually ran at a buttery smooth 60 frames per second. I also want to mention that even with the 30 FPS lock, I'm seeing these weird stutters when I'm playing it on my Xbox Series X. Like, maybe there's an issue with the frame pacing or something. Even for a 30 FPS game, it just doesn't feel smooth, but I hope they fix it soon. The Switch version still has frame rate drops, but nowhere near as bad as the original game. Overall, it runs pretty decent, but I wish it could have been a stable 30 frames per second. I think in 2023, we have the technology. It would have been nice to see the frame rate boosted to 60 FPS, at least on Xbox, but again, we're not seeing that here. As long as we're imagining what could have been, the 2007 build of GoldenEye for the Xbox 360 actually did run at 60, in addition to having improved character models and level textures. The game looked great, and you could even press a button to return to the original graphics. But unfortunately, that's not the case with this version of the game that released on Xbox or Switch. What we're getting here is pretty much an upscaled version of the original game. There's no new character models, textures, or anything else. It's almost exactly as you remember it from the original cartridge, but with a more stable frame rate and increased resolution. 
It's in many ways a disappointment compared to what it could have been. I will say though that the new aiming system where the crosshair is centered in the Xbox version makes the controls way better than even that of the unreleased 360 port. That version still used the old school aiming method and this new version makes it a lot more fun and fluid to play. Leading up to the release, there was some controversy over the audio emulation. Nintendo tweeted out a video of the pause screen, and people noticed that there were some instruments missing from the classic watch menu theme. Thankfully, those issues seem to be fixed. The game has an incredible soundtrack, one of the best of all time if you ask me. It feels great to be able to listen to all of these classic tunes again. The Switch version of GoldenEye has online play, but it's not great. If you exchange friend codes, you can play with others, but it really just syncs up the emulation for all of the players. So when you're playing online, you see the whole split screen view. However, as with all the other N64 games on the Switch, there aren't any public lobbies, matchmaking, voice chat, or anything. I wasn't expecting any of that, but I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of what they mean by online play. And everyone playing needs a strong internet connection, since it's not actual net code, like they didn't go back into the original GoldenEye code and add online multiplayer. So it's a little less robust than an actual online mode would be. I had a chance to try it out with Victor Lucas from the Electric Playground, and while there were some audio issues, overall it was a blast. And he was so great playing with one of the pioneers of TV coverage of video games. Person Color is the champion, man. The Xbox version, however, is limited to four-player split-screen only. Now, to be fair, that is what we had in the original game in the 90s, but the Xbox version of Perfect Dark, the spiritual successor to GoldenEye by the same developers at Rare, had full online play for up to eight players. We don't have that in GoldenEye, and we can only speculate as to why. Many online are guessing that in the deal that needed to be struck between Microsoft and Nintendo, Nintendo may have required that the Xbox version not include any form of online play. We might never know the full reality of the situation, but regardless, there's no online play on Xbox, unfortunately. Even the addition of bots would have been nice. It's just such a missed opportunity, and it would have been so much smoother on Xbox Live. If you're not fussy about what this re-release could have been, you might have a great time with the new version of GoldenEye. It's exactly the same game from 1997, even with all of its issues. I'm enjoying the Xbox version, but it's just sad that what we got here is not quite up to the standard of the enhanced version that Rare was working on back in 2007. I'm not going to get my hopes up about any frame rate boost to 60 FPS or other enhancements, but the stutters in the Xbox version do need to be fixed, and there needs to be a better control scheme on Switch. Until then, I'm going to invite a few friends over and see if we can't still enjoy this classic piece of gaming history.